Tanse, Iklanate. Those are two indigenous words for hello. My name is Carol Rose Golden Eagle, and I am going to be reading from my most recent book of poetry, Essential Ingredients, which I had to write. Um, I have three children who are now in their mid-20s, and often they come home and we'll sit around the fire and we'll talk about beautiful moments that we've shared in their life. And I just really thought, you know what? I need to write these things down. So I did in the form of poetry. So I will read you a couple um, today. So the first one, my daughter Nahani, I call her my bunny. Don't know why, but I just do. So this one is called Baby Bunny. I made a woman cry while at a powwow. My baby bunny, do you want a hot dog while I'm up? It's how we talk. Sometimes in honesty, I call her bunny because I forget my own children's names. I'm so busy with details, but details about them are never at the fray. That woman at the powwow reminded me that day. That woman turned to me and say, <clears throat> my comment reminded her, baby bunny, tears in her eyes. She managed to say, my dad used to call me his bunny, but he never told me why. He taught me to snare, how to fish, how to gut, how to pick. He died this year and I miss him every day. And I just wanted to tell her that I'm sorry to hear, mostly because I wanted to hold my own bunny's face. So beautiful, kiss it, rejoice and say, I will teach you how to fish and gut and pick too. And I will tell you, I love you every single day. So yeah, my whole poetry manuscript, um, the whole idea was love letters to my kids because we forget moments and I wanted to write them down. So I wrote some of them down. There are so many. So here's another one, DNA. All right. It is told, retold of how Kokum killed a bear with a river rock. Kokum is Cree for grandmother. An arm like Ronnie Lancaster, that old Saskatchewan Rough Rider, she throws it with precision at Musqua's third eye. Musqua is a word for bear in Cree. It is the baby's soft spot. That bear falls hard as coyotes watch from the bush. And then they spread the word quickly. Kokum is never stalked again while out picking berries. It is a story I tell, Nachanis, which is a Cree word for my daughter. She wants to hear it again tonight. Repetition, it's how my five-year-old learns. For her, this memory is medicine, warm, like the Vicks I rub on her throat tonight. My daughter wears the story like a protective shield, honors it like a jingle dress. Stories ingested like a comfort food, becoming proud memory, stories that flow through our strong bloodline, a meandering river. And when she turns 10, Nachanis asks me, am I pretty, Nikawi? Cree word for mother. I love it when she calls her, she calls me her mama, using Kokum's language, our Cree language, it has spirit, and so does she. And I tell her, no, you are not pretty. You are beautiful in every possible way. And I tell her she makes me proud. And I say, she reminds me of Kokum. They have the same eyes, the same smile, strength, genetic memory. Nachanis asks me, 
to retell the story once again about the day Kokum killed a bear with a river rock. And <clears throat> this one, it was hard for me as a mom because um, they're here every day, like children are. And uh, one day they grew up and they moved away and it was very difficult for me, like it is for every mom, to um, to say, okay, you guys are leaving the nest now. So I wrote this one, borrowing money, borrowing time, because, well, that's what they do. Beautiful young adults forging a path of your own. It takes me some time to realize a healthy home cooked meal isn't always on the table now the moment you walk through the door like it used to be when you lived at home. Now you order a pizza and it costs more than cooking for yourself. You go wash up and there are no clean towels because you've never had to pay to do the laundry before it was always done by me. So now it will cost you $3 a load, two more to dry. Things add up and you never had to deal with it while you were living in the nest and it's left you a bit short. With a few remaining minutes on your cell phone, you call because you want to borrow some money until you get paid and you say, I get a deposit on Friday, mom. I can pay you back then. And I suppose you might wonder about the pause on the other end of the line. It's because I can handle the small amount you're asking for. I've been there a bit short. I will probably be there again. But always, when you ask me, I do not ask questions. I make no demands. I just answer your call for help because that's what moms do. It's why I can never figure out those parents who say, I need to teach my kid a lesson, and they enforce a militant repayment date. Assholes, really, like, what the hell? Don't they remember being young, starting out? I remember all those years, all those times, when you picked up the mail without being told, I was expecting a check and you delivered it to me. And all those times you walked the dog without being asked and you cleaned the house. I was gone for a week and you didn't want me to come home to dirty dishes. And I remember you baked me a pumpkin pie. <clears throat> it was a surprise for my birthday because I like pumpkin pie better than cake. But even more, I remember all those times we sat around the campfire roasting wieners and we laughed and it was priceless. And you work extra hard studying for calculus in high school and never asked for my help because that is not my thing. You accept I'm good with words, but not numbers. And so you applied yourself and the advanced math, which I never took, you passed it all on your own. And I cried, pinning that boot in the air before graduation ceremonies. Red roses, the color of my love for you. Red, the color the elders say spirits recognize and respond to. We have literally climbed mountains together and now you go up by, by yourself. You need a little bit of financial help once in a while to get by. So I lend you money, but that's not really true. Lending means there's an expectation of payment, but you have already repaid in spades. You made me proud to know You've shared my life. You have been a part of my life. 
the most important part, really. And you repay me all the time with unexpected phone calls to say hello, texts wishing me a, a good day, and emails and overnight visits where we share your favorite meal. You repay me by all these actions, and I am proud of your strength, your courage, your wisdom, your love of life, your diligence, and tenacity. And you are beautiful. You paid me, repaid me a long time ago, even before you were born. You repaid me by blessing my life, and my heart knows this. So it, exchanging some small amount of money will just be one of those things we do. There is no need to repay. Whatever the amount, it is a small price, and it will never add up to what you have already given me. And those are just some things I think about my children. And I know every parent thinks that way. And we should because we are blessed. So I thank you. And I hope you enjoy reading my manuscript, which is basically love letters to my kids. We need to send them, send yours as well.